Home prices have risen astronomically, nearly 20 percent higher year over year, making home ownership unaffordable for millions of Americans. Rents are spiking, too. The biggest culprit is an historic housing shortage. Strong demand and low supply mean higher prices, and experts say it's unlikely that prices nationwide will drop in any significant way anytime soon. This week, I spoke with the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Marsha Fudge, about the rising cost of housing and what can be done about it. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Since the pandemic started, housing prices, rents across the country ha have really soared, even in places where housing affordability had been taken for granted. Understanding that the reasons for that are complex, some of the reasons uh, extend beyond the federal government's reach, what do you see as the overall solution? Well, I don't know that there's any one solution, Jeff. Quite frankly, this has been an ongoing problem. It just didn't start with the pandemic. It just uh, became more clear and, there were, uh, and a brighter light was shined on it. We have not kept up with housing in this country for decades. The biggest problem is that there is a supply problem. There is much more demand than there is supply. And so we know that today we need at least one and a half million new units of housing just for the population we have right now. We also know that because of the rising cost of housing, not only just to rent it or to buy it, but also to build it, that we have seen fewer housing starts for single family houses than we have in years. We have seen fewer multifamily units built than we have seen in years. And purchases are going down as well because of the economy and other things. So there's no one solution. But what I do believe that we need to do is find ways to incentivize or encourage developers to build more multifamily housing. Well, on that point, is there a role for the federal government to play, whether it's uh, providing grants to ease local zoning rules or to, to give developers incentives to build denser housing? In May, the president put forth what he called a housing supply plan. $30 billion dedicated to housing. So we are putting more money into the housing trust fund so we can do some gap financing. We are putting more money into housing finance agencies. We are doing more by technical assistance. We are talking to mayors. You know, Jeff, just we're doing everything from the federal government that we can, but we need help from Congress. But we also need help from communities that are suffering with these problems. Jeff, there is more money out there right now than they will ever have. The rescue plan, the COVID plan, those, those bills created an environment where many states and cities are flush with resources. Mm. So between Treasury and us, we are saying to them, look, you have these resources. Use them to try to alleviate this housing crisis that you have in your community. So together, all of us working together, I do believe that we can make a dent in it. Homeownership is the most frequent path to wealth building in this country. It's the best path to wealth building in this country. And yet black home ownership is at the lowest level since the 1968 Fair Housing Act was signed. What do you see as the reasons for that? And, and, and what's the best way to address it? I would say just very honestly to you that there is still a system in place that is really a discriminatory system. We still redline communities in this country, Jeff. Right now, because people won't lend in communities where homes are valued at less than $100,000, $125,000, those communities begin to die. We won't, uh, we won't loan money for people to buy those houses. We won't give them money to rehabilitate those houses. And so what happens is investors come in, they buy them up for cash most of the time. They start to rent. They put a few, they do put a little money in them. And then they raise the rents for everybody in the neighborhood. Uh, I think that we also have to understand that appraisal bias is a major issue in this as well. You will find that the blacker or browner the community is, the lower the valuation of the homes. And so that also creates a problem for lenders. Thirdly, when you look at black and brown people, one of the biggest impediments to purchasing a home is student loan debt. It has been weighted higher than any other kind of debt in this country. And so it makes them uncreditworthy. Well, one of the things we have already done is neutralize student loan debt up to a certain amount so that we can make those people credit worthy. Uh, and then today, of course, interest rates are going up. So that has created an, another uh, impediment on top of what already exists. But a lot of it is just the system itself. Jeff, the system is not designed 
to help low-income people or poor people or, poor, or people of color. But to banks' credit today, as we have been talking with them, they are starting to realize there are things that they can do to encourage uh, home ownership in black and brown populations, and they are doing it. For those who might be unfamiliar, before you were HUD secretary, you were a member of Congress. Before that, uh, you were a mayor in Ohio. How does all of that inform the work that you do now? I mean, there are people who say that housing policy in many ways is local. You have that perspective as a former mayor, as a member of Congress. Without the experiences I've had, Jeff, there's no way that I could really do the job the way that I believe that I should be doing it. Having worked with Congress, understanding the process by which they pass federal laws, but also the appropriations. And what I know as a, as a mayor is that cities can't do it alone. Yes, cities do control zoning, and yes, these cities need to look at zoning. But there is no way, with the gravity of the problem, that any community can do it by themselves. It just doesn't happen that way. They cannot deal with the homelessness crisis. They cannot deal with all of the issues that go along with trying to get people into their first homes. But we are saying, as a federal government, we can assist you with down payment assistance. We can assist you by staying in your homes, by giving you longer mortgages. We can make sure that we treat you fairly throughout that lending process. Those are things that the federal government can and should do. Those things come under us, whether it be being insured by FHA or whether it be um, loans that are secured by Jenny May. We have the wherewithal federally to make an impact on all the lenders in the country. Normal communities can't do that. We can. We also have resources that we have put out. Again, rescue plan, tons of money. We send out community development block grant money, which many of them use. We send home money to communities to help them build housing, as well as we look at a broader picture and understand the significance of the problems. We today, over, over the next couple of days, are going to be announcing new housing vouchers that we have gotten from communities that haven't used them, and we're distributing those to communities who need them. So housing choice vouchers is a big thing. We need to do everything we can, all hands on deck, to be sure that everybody has an opportunity to live in a safe, decent house in a decent neighborhood. It's just not something that we have focused on, Jeff, and we have to focus on it. And I think my background lends itself to doing it because I've always worked very, very close to the people. Mayors are the first line of defense. Congress hmm. people, we talk to people every day. And so a lot of people who make decisions don't talk to people every day. I am just blessed and fortunate to have been able to bend in those particular roles. Secretary Marsha Fudge, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate being with you.